If you've been subscribed to the channel for the past couple of months, you already know what this video is about, but if you're new on my channel, I have full in-depth recaps of each season of Manifest, but in those videos, I just give you what the show gives us. We didn't really deep dive into the mystery behind Flight 828, but now it's time to put on our tinfoil hats and talk about what really happened to Flight 828. How is Alzuris connected? What's up with the peacock? Did they die and come back to life? Have the creators of the show given us any extra clues to figure out the truth? What does Noah's Ark have to do with anything? All these questions and more I will be attempting to answer in this video. I'm going to go off what we know for sure, my own personal theories and ideas, and then I'm going to look into some other Manifest fan theories and see if any of you guys out there got the answers as well. So, let's try and figure out what happened to Flight 828, Manifest Explained. Now I'm not about to do a full recap of the show because I already spent months on those and they're linked in the description and at the end screen of this video, had to plug them real quick, but we do need to provide some context first. So at its core, the story is loosely based on the real life event of the flight from Malaysia going missing without a trace in 2014, but what if that plane came back five years later? And what if, for the passengers, no time had passed? Well that's where we get manifest. In 2013, Flight 828 took off for a routine flight home from Jamaica when the plane seemed to disappear in midair after going through an electrical storm, specifically the phenomena of dark lightning, and that is a key element to the mystery of Flight 828. After the turbulence, they returned home only to be met with everyone telling them they had been missing for five and a half years. This was confirmed when they saw all the people they knew and loved five years older than before. After this, the passengers started hearing voices in their heads and experienced visions that they later dubbed the callings. These callings allowed for the passengers to prevent future dangers from happening, almost like they could tell the future. After this, they figured out other people can and have experienced the same problem and their abilities come with a deadline. So the show is the passengers trying to solve what's going on to them to avoid death while going against the likes of the US government, their fellow Americans, their fellow passengers, and most of all, supernatural dangers. And I think that's the simplest way I can explain Manifest. So the key things we need to focus on to try and figure out what happened to the passengers are Dark Lightning, Alzuris, and religion. More specifically, Christianity and Noah's Ark. The idea that the callings and what the passengers experienced being connected to God were very present long before we got to the peace of Noah's Ark at Eureka. We saw it first with Adrian who played the perspective of the affected turning to religion because nothing else could explain it. But then it turned to the idea of resurrection once we saw the tail fin get unearthed. But I personally didn't think it was connected to religion until we got to season 3. So season 3 established that the gemstone sapphire is another piece to the puzzle and could potentially be behind what happened to Flight 828. Ben's hand, the tail fin, Jason his crew's bodies, and most likely all the other passengers have traces of sapphire in them. And of course, it was also found in the piece of Noah's Ark. But sapphire is translated to the glow of God in ancient texts, and if we remember from the show, Ben's hand, the tail fin, pretty much everything, had that strong glow that we saw at the end of season 1 with Alzaris's book. Alzaris wrote about a glow on his ship before they experienced the same thing as Flight 828, and you guessed it, Noah experienced the same glow during the flood. But where else have we seen this glow before, though? Oh yeah, right before Flight 828 went through the electrical storm, Cal saw the glowing light out of the window. So this glowing light has to represent either God or whatever supernatural forces are at play, and when it shows up, miracles and extraordinary things occur. And what we know from the show is that the glow comes from or is made of sapphire. Along with the glow, we gotta talk about Noah though. So it seems like there are a lot of parallels between Ben, Noah's Ark, and the rest of the passengers, but we don't get any concrete answers at the end of Season 3. Did Noah cause the flood, or was he warned of the flood? And do his actions and intentions mirror Ben's now? Either way, we gotta talk about how Noah's Ark is connected. So I'm gonna dip into my own theories a little bit real quick, but I believe that the flood that led Noah to building the Ark was one of, if not the first instances of this glow and callings working their magic. And this is maybe where we get the first reference of a lifeboat, but I'll get more into that in a second. But one of the animals on the boat was a peacock, and this is one of the biggest clues we are shown throughout the entire show. It's on the papyrus, Cal finds a peacock feather, multiple passengers see a peacock, it's in a lot of ancient texts, it's inscribed on that one guy's pocket watch that saved his dad's life, but more importantly there are traces of peacock DNA in the driftwood that confirm its biblical origins. The peacock has been the main thing I've been trying to figure out this entire time, but all I know is that the peacock clues in the first two seasons had to be the callings trying to tell them it's connected to Noah's Ark and possibly God too. Or wait, let me just do a quick Google search and see what peacock means in general. Oh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So all have definitely brought this up at some point, but maybe I just missed it. But yeah, in Christianity, the peacock has been used to represent the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Meaning the callings of the peacocks have been signs that they were resurrected. Well, maybe, I'm not sure yet. But after the tail fin was first discovered, Ben is the first main character to believe in the possibility that the passengers were resurrected too. And it wouldn't be so far-fetched considering Zeke, Griffin, and Jace were all literally resurrected, causing them to be connected to all of this. But wait a minute, the glow is there right before a miracle happens. Jesus being resurrected was a miracle. What if the glowing sapphire is the key to bring someone back to life? But the only thing that can prove that specifically the Flight 828 passengers were resurrected is the tail fin. But that could also be the thing that proves it's not connected to religion and resurrection at all. 
So personally, I side more with people like Sanvi, Vance, and Gupta when it comes to things like this, even though nothing like this has ever happened, but in the world of Manifest, we are now going to talk about the possible scientific explanations, not religious or supernatural. So when it comes to answers, we kind of got one in the very first episode. The plane went through an electrical storm, and during this, a phenomenon called dark lightning was involved. Now, we are going to talk about time travel and teleportation theories in a later segment, but dark lightning would be the cause of any of these situations to take place. Now, again, there still is another season, but from what we know about dark lightning and the show is that they simulated to test on the wood in the tail fin which causes them to disappear and return. Sound familiar? Where they go and for how long they don't know but this could easily be applied to the passengers. But you have to add in one more ingredient, sapphire. When the glow is present and the dark lightning occurs you experience what Flight 828 Zeke and Alzuris did. But there has to be a more scientific explanation of what happened, right? Well besides dark lightning and the DNA marker that only the passengers and people who are resurrected have, the show and specifically season 3 leans more towards supernatural. But again, in the world of Manifest, let's go off of fact. Well, kind of fact. What can we compare this to? So in the 1500s, a ship captain named Alzaris was out at sea with his crew when they experienced a storm very similar to the electrical storm Flight 828 went through, and it's believed that dark lightning was at play here as well. But during the storm, he looked up in the sky and saw what he described as a metal dragon, but we later find out this was Flight 828. But we'll touch on that with the theories, we're still just laying down the facts right now. But after this storm, his men experienced callings and the ones who went against them had to jump off the ship creating the lifeboat theory. But nonetheless, after Ben and his team find Alzaris' journal, they use it as a guide to figure out what the callings mean because based on the book, Alzaris' ship went through the same thing Flight 828 did all the way down to the glow. But what Alzaris' story establishes is that Flight 828 and his ship were at the same place at the same time for just a moment, and his experience established the majority of the rules for the callings which includes the lifeboat theory. So I know you're probably wondering why I haven't brought up the death date yet, but I just feel like it didn't need much of an explanation and it didn't really lead to any answers we were looking for, but it's important for the lifeboat theory. So the theory is that all the people who experienced the resurrection-like event are put in the same lifeboat and if someone goes against the callings, it can sink the lifeboat, or to put it more bluntly, they die. Now it's established in the show early that for however long the resurrector were dead or gone for is how long they have to live when they come back. 8 to 8, 5 and a half years, Zeke a year and a half, and so on. But they believe, and so did Alzaris, that if you follow the callings, you can survive the death date, and we saw this with Zeke. But back to the lifeboat theory. If someone doesn't follow the callings like we saw with Jason and his crew, they all died because he metaphorically sank their lifeboat. But this brings us to our first theory of what happened to Flight 828. So this is one of the main theories presented in the show and I feel like it holds some merit, specifically because of the Jay story, but if we remember on the papyrus from season 3 that had the peacock feather I might add, it showed the story of the last trial where three prisoners were given a second chance and then judged by God to see if they were worthy. If the flight 828 passengers did die and were given a second chance, this would be their form of going through the last trial. The only thing is that they have to follow the rules of the callings which kind of messes up the theory. But the majority of the callings lead to the passengers saving lives, so if the test God gave them was would they do the right thing when called upon, then yes, you could say God is seeing if they are worthy of a second chance at life. Other things that point to this being resurrection are the connections to God we see throughout the callings. Many have biblical undertones and some are literal symbols for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then there's the possibility that Noah's Ark is connected and is another example of this situation. But the main thing that led Ben, the person we follow through most of the show, to believing this theory too, was the tail fin. When the tail fin was discovered from the bottom of the ocean, this permanently split the show in half. If you want to stick to the religious route, you could say that the plane did crash into the ocean and the passengers died, but a new plane was created as they were all resurrected and sent back to the same place in the sky just five years later. But many argue, and I tend to lean towards, the tail fin being proof of parallel universes and the idea that they can cross over one another. So I'm going to try and explain this in the best way I can, but from the get-go I thought the show would take the parallel universe angle. But when the dark lightning occurred, it ripped open a hole in time where either the two universes overlapped and or were created. One where the plane exploded and one where the plane landed five years later. This would explain why the tail fin from the universe where the plane exploded is in the universe where they survived. Now again, we're going to need some more answers from season 4, but we know that during the event, Flight 828 was sent to the same place Alzaris' ship was at during the storm. Were they both in the 1500s or in 2013 or in some whole new place? We aren't sure yet. But Flight 828 either time traveled or teleported after it went through the electrical storm and dark lightning is the key to figuring out where they went. But at the end of season 3 is where we're really left in the dust because after the tail fin is returned, Cal returns from wherever he and the pilot were sent to but is now the correct age. Meaning this could be him from the other universe, or maybe he went to the other universe and spent 5 years there, went through a wormhole that aged him 5 years, I'm not entirely sure, but I do have my theories. Like I said before, I lean more towards the science aspect, but this show leans equally to religion as well, so I kinda have a theory for each. 
So if the answers lie with God and Christianity, I think that the glowing light is God in some sort of energy form and it has come down to resurrect people like his son. God could also be coming down to alter events to possibly correct the timeline or send a message. Noah's Ark was the first instance of this, then Alzerus, then Flight 828. But no one gets a free pass, so through callings it tests the afflicted to see if they are worthy and in doing so allows for them to perform miracles. Maybe it was hoping this would cause the passengers to spread its message, possibly? And I say it because the callings could also be coming from a godlike source, but not the Christian God. Because the show refers to a lot of different mythologies, so this unseen force could be the one true mystical force that has been interpreted into different religions. So maybe instead of God, it's like the universe is at work. But again, this is my theory in the event that the show continues to go into this route, but I really like the idea that the dark lightning caused a rip in time or like a wormhole or something. Because none of the religious stuff really explains why they went five years in the future. But I'm not sure where they went and where Cal went when he touched the tail fin, but there had to be a universe where the plane exploded because they couldn't have both planes, one five years in the future from the other in the same universe. At least I don't think so. I'm going to take a page from Futurama real quick of all sources, but according to the professor, the duplicate of every person from the newly created universe is doomed to die no matter what. Hmm, kind of like a death date, you know? So in conclusion, I think there's two universes, one where they died and one where they were sent five years in the future. After that, it's all speculation and googling fan theories. A lot of fan theories online relate to the parallel universe theory and some definitely inspired my own theory, but I wanted to show a few that I really liked and agree with to some extent. And of course I found all of them from Reddit and I don't really want to have to read out all of them so you're either just going to have to read them yourself or I'll do the text to speech if I can figure that out. But uh, yeah, here are my favorite theories I found on Reddit so far. My current theory is that whatever force is behind the disappearances slash reappearances and callings, let's just call it the divine, is actively moving reality toward one of two realities, based on the passenger's actions, 1, the plane exploded and crashed into the ocean, 2, the plane safely arrived in New York on time with no time delay. Thus, when Sanvi killed the Major, the tailfin appeared at the bottom of the ocean and all signs indicated that it had been there for seven years. Sanvi's actions moved reality closer to one in which the plane had exploded and lay on the bottom of the ocean. In contrast, Cal's actions, whatever he did, moved reality closer to one in which the plane safely landed in New York without time delay or issue. Thus, Cal appears to be the appropriate age he should be, had no time skip occurred. So, Ultimately, the divine decides which reality becomes true, the one in which the plane crashed and all passengers died, or the plane successfully navigated the storm and landed on time. Passengers' actions will push their reality toward either outcome, depending on what they do. Ultimately, only one outcome will become real. I think Cal coming back as an older person has something to do with the death day. This is going to sound dumb, but each passenger has a major calling, like a final boss, if you will. If they solve it. They beat the death day and return to society as if they were never on the flight. When Cal touched the tail fin, this was him beginning this final boss. That's why he disappeared. Notice how we didn't see what his calling was that led him to go to the tail fin. I think this is how all the passengers beat the death day. I like your theory. In a way, the ultimate sacrifice. For Zeke it was very literal. Giving his life to save Cal under the ice. But the theme fits. Zeke has always been a survivor. Survived the time travel not to mention his drug abuse and, if I remember right, the car crash that his sister died in. Perhaps the other characters that died didn't make the ultimate sacrifice for them. Griffin was greedy and didn't even try. But the meth heads. While the two good brothers fulfilled their callings they failed the ultimate sacrifice. Which was the bad brother Jay. If I remember right, like he had to be stopped by any means. But he wasn't, so without being stopped his death caused the other twos. Not as in a lifeboat but as in a sacrifice. The two good brothers' ultimate sacrifice was to give up their brother. While for Cal, it would appear his ultimate sacrifice was giving up his youth. That's why he was crying, he knew he couldn't come back until he was older. That was Cal's ultimate sacrifice. And to come back to his mother gone, literally dying in his arms, really represents his loss of childhood. He succeeded. So should be safe from the death date. Time will tell if the theory is true and what ultimate sacrifices are in your words final boss each character will have to face. Again, I haven't found too many theories that go in a completely different direction than what we talked about today, but I'm going to look for more as we wait for season four. I mean, this person made a 46-page dissertation about their own theory, and I kind of want to read it. 
And I know we probably only scratched the surface of the real answers to Manifest, but we really need season four first. I feel like it's gonna answer almost everything for us. But once we know where Cal went, I think it'll all come together, but for now it's all up to fan theories and what we know from the show. There's still stuff like the phrases, it's all connected and all things work together for good that we need to get into. So I wanted to get this video out ASAP so we can discuss in the comments, especially while all you Manifest fans are on my page. I'm gonna do another video like this in a little bit after I get some theories from you guys and online that I'll use for the channel, because trust me, I do not know the answers myself. So Needless to say, I need your guys' help, so please leave your theories and ideas in the comments below and what's some manifest content that you guys would like to see. But for the next couple weeks, I'm going to try and focus on getting my other content out there like my identity video, but don't worry, it'll just be a couple of them. I'll be back soon to talk about manifest theories in season 4, but make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Go check out my identity explained video if you want to see the type of content that's going to be coming besides manifest videos, but uh, other than that, I'm going to see y'all later.